What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out The Undertaker explains why the Brothers of Destruction didn't last. Now I wanted to check this out. This is uh, from The Undertaker's uh, podcast. We recently just checked out uh, some of the best moments from Kane over the years, and you know they had some of the Brothers of Destruction moments there. So I definitely wanted to check this one out, man. Uh, it's dope just to see, you know mark calloway you know the legendary undertaker kind of peeled back the curtain on his time in wwe and and over the years and i think that's actually pretty cool when you think about it of all the people all the wrestlers over the years he's the one guy that had kept kayfabe alive and true you didn't really know too much about him in his personal life so now that he's kind of peeling back the curtain and talking about things definitely you know uh good conversation now so you know definitely wanted to check this one out Appreciate all love support y'all showing on channel. Let's see what happened with the Brothers of Destruction. When did that first conversation start with, hey, let's let's do something together? Well, after a while, it just becomes it just becomes natural. We had run for that part of our we had battled each other. We had had our WrestleMania mm -hmm. match. We had had the Infernal match. I think we had had an, we had we had pretty much gone through the one on one and moved on. And then it just kind of become like a natural, like, can you imagine these two together? Mm -hmm. And we were in that, just kind of in that situation where it, 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 it happened and we, we got put together and it was just the, <laughs> it's as good as it was duo. I mean, that's it, the thing there, there was, it was awesome, but it was too awesome. Yeah, <laughs> because there's good. nobody. I mean, there was the there's nobody who matches up to two guys with two giants. One throws lightning and the other one throws fire. <laughs> I mean, like, how do you how do you match anybody up against that? Yeah, you don't. And that that was so the thing that made it so cool and so ominous and dominant was also the reason why it didn't last any longer than it did because they just couldn't book anybody with us. Yeah. I mean, just, we had to just, kill. We had to it, kill everybody. Yeah, none of it. It, it doesn't make sense if you've... Uh, That's a fair point because I remember when they teamed up, I was like, nobody's stopping them. Like, nobody's, like, realistically stopping these guys. They're about to fucking... They're both supernatural characters that can't be killed. <laughs> it's GGs for everybody, essentially. You know, if you've got a a, a, a tag team that's you know combined weight of 300 pounds that's <laughs> facing a, guy, a combined weight of almost 700 pounds yeah it, it just doesn't i mean the math doesn't add up no and um yeah it was man we 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 just smoked everybody and we end up we end up getting the the tag belts and then um the WWE tag belts and the then yep. the WCW guys came over, which I think was was DDP and Chris Canyon. I believe they had the WCW titles. So then we had to have um, a unification match. Yeah, you guys were three time tag team champions. Yeah, I, I mean seriously, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fun it, it, it was it was fun doing pre-tapes together and and vignettes together it was it was all it was a lot of fun and it wasn't much work because we just were so physically dominant over everybody that we pretty much had our way um, <laughs> and <laughs> it was <laughs> and that's where it's also with both of y'all this is what's always been kind of interesting whenever you bring two guys together that were singles you know, uh, for uh, singles wrestlers for most of their career, right? Come together, especially two guys like y'all, where all of a sudden now, like, who's going to finish this match? You know what I mean? Like, like who's going to do the sell and it, who's going to get the hot tag? Or, or? Yeah, yeah. Like, mm. who's going to who's going to get the finisher? Who's going to get to pin the guy? You know what I mean? Like, who's going to get that glory? You know what I mean? Like, and, especially with you two, right? And I and I'll and I'll tell you, I there. Glenn always he always volunteered to sell and really? give me the hot tag. Damn. It wasn't even it wasn't even the only argument that we ever had was the you know on the times where I wanted him to get the hot tag. Yeah. Wow. And he, and he was he, like no, he no. was like no he said they, they don't pay they don't pay they they pay to see your 
they pay to see your hot tag. And and this is the psychology of wrestling and why it's so important to build those hot tag moments because that's what the crowd's there for. They're gr they're there to see the hot tag, the guy that they want to see or the girl that they want to see get in the ring and and wreck shit. And people love Kane. We just watched the video, and, and it was just, you know, cool to see his great moments. People love Kane. I love Kane as a character. It was great what he was able to do in WWE. But we all know people also paid really big money to see The Undertaker. And to get that moment of Kane hitting the hot tag to The Undertaker and The Undertaker wrecking shop as soon as he get in the ring, it makes sense makes sense and you get your hand raised and i said no man it's just a team deal and he goes i sell you come make the comeback that's that was just kind of wow. wow that's how unselfish he was where there was a lot of people in that same that same boat would have like well let, let's go back and forth Boy, let's yeah. switch it off night after night yeah. which was i was willing to do he didn't he just that's he, crazy he, you know obviously part of that was he was grateful uh, I think for the help that I had given him, but, and then also who the undertaker character was as far as the company, but he all, oh, man, he was a workhorse dude. And he, his ego was always on a shelf somewhere and whatever was best for business. That's what he did. And that's, what's crazy about Kane, even just, you know, hearing this from the undertaker, you know, like him just. He's Kane. He's not no J-A-G. Everybody knows who Kane is. He's a, an iconic figure in wrestling. He's iconic as well as The Undertaker. Obviously, he's way more popular in a sense, but people know who Kane is. And for Kane to be like, nah, you good. They paid to see you. I'm doing what's best for the company. This is what's best for the company. Them seeing you get the hot tag. Them seeing you get the pin. I'm good either way. I'm, I'm here. I'm glad to be in this, you know, this situation with you. But I understand I'm not as the bigger I'm not the bigger draw. And for him to have that type of self awareness and to be selfless like that, like I said, he deserves his flowers for sure. And he did it great. <sighs> that says a lot about him to, uh, to do that. You're not gonna you're not gonna find a better human being than Glenn Jacobs. I I, I dude, I've got one story on him that I that I can tell and even that isn't bad <laughs> I mean it really isn't it, it, it's nothing other uh, other than you know being a little bit tiny bit maybe overserved. Oh. but one one night in over 25 years other than that he, dude he is just like first on the bus ready to go first in the arena first Got to get set down and go over, figure out what's going to happen in the match. Just a consummate professional and uh, just a pleasure, honestly. God. I mean, it's boring to almost keep putting him over, but that, I mean, that's who he was <laughs> and he, who he is. And it was just a lot of fun, though, man. We, it, you, you think about it. You go back and look at The Undertaker and Kane. And you look through the power, some of the powerhouse tagged in, like who comes to mind usually for the, the road warriors. Yeah. We dwarfed the road yeah. warriors. I mean, the road warriors are, were jacked up and mm -hmm. big dudes. We dwarfed them. If you, if Brothers of Destruction went, you know, uh, had a 10, 15 year career together mm -hmm. where y'all were just a tag team, you know right. what I mean? Do you go down as the greatest tag team of all time? I think so. For sure. I, I mean, yeah, all, I, I, I'll be, from a booking standpoint, nobody would really beat them. It, they would have to cheat so much to beat them. From a booking standpoint, like you said, it's hard to kind of match up with them. You would have to put basically some top guys, for example, the two-man power trip. Those were top guys in Stone Cold and when Stone Cold was a heel in Triple H, when, you know, obviously him being a heel. That's the only thing you can kind of maybe do. It would have to be top guys that are not traditionally tag teams for it to for people to really buy into the fact, okay, it, it, would, it can't be traditional tag teams unless you have someone in size and stature that you're trying to build up. So, yeah, they definitely probably would have been went down as the greatest tag team of all time, dominant tag team of all time.
obviously there, there's teams out there that can do different things, but as far as a dominant tag team, like I said, there's nobody, there's nobody that matched up with us. Just, there was no one. If you think about it, and I may be completely wrong because there's a lot of those years that, you know, I was not watching wrestling, mm -hmm. but y'all might, are y'all the last kind of main event tag team that WWE kind of had? Well, I mean, as, as a as a tag team, maybe. Um, I mean, you you we had, you know, they did some judicious booking there in the Attitude Area mm -hmm. era where they would create they would create tag teams just to kind of take it easier on the top guys. Yeah, I mean, like you've had The Rock and, and yeah, Austin and Stone and Cold like, work, yeah, working against. But I mean, you guys could you guys could headline a pay per view. Yeah, though. I think so. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And that's what I the think. The problem was the problem was finding opponents. Oh, well, yeah. See, the biggest problem there is who are you going to wrestle? Though, yeah. On that I mean, if event. we weren't wrestling in a Stone Cold and a and a Rock and yeah, I mean, you're not. They're not going to stand much of a chance. <laughs> That's the thing. That's where, you know, two-man power trip. I remember they were feuding with them for a little bit. I think Triple H ended up getting injured, and they had to go in a different direction. I could be wrong on that. I could be wrong on that. But uh, I do remember they that was they, they were feuding with the, the Brothers of Destruction as well. And it made sense because those were top guys. They weren't traditional tag teams, though. They weren't a tag team traditionally, but they were top guys that they put together as a team to offset <laughs> the aura and the overness and the dominance of Kane and The Undertaker. It's just the way it is. And it would have been fun, though, to see y'all as a tag team uh, wrestling the likes of like the Road Warriors, right? Like during their prime oh yeah it would have been that would have been fun and even like a uh demolition that would have been fun to, yeah. to because those guys could go as well steiners oh mm -hmm. yeah those I mean, would have been great but yeah. there are still i mean even all those guys y'all are y'all are twice their size it seems yeah. like i mean from what i'm thinking about you know in my head right now uh they're all you're just you're just much bigger than them and mm -hmm. you're watching that match and you're going how's this team ever going to do anything you, you have to suspend your sense of reality for a while. <laughs> uh, it just it's is what it is. But that was like again, that's what made it so cool was that these guys are such beasts. They're just they defied logic because we were obviously bigger than a lot bigger than yeah. your normal person. Like, mm -hmm. and when y'all got together, did you go, man? I know. 100 percent this ain't gonna last long like i just i know that this is gonna be a short run <laughs> we were i think we were having so much fun like we didn't really think about it yeah like if i had to really put thought into it um yeah i mean you know that that's not gonna go for a whole long period of time and to, to i mean to be truthful like you want to be you you want to be in the singles picture yeah mm -hmm. and but the it was good for me just to recharge my batteries mm -hmm. and just take it easy on my body yep while having a good time with with with, with glenn it was it really was it was yeah. it was fun it's still making money too i mean it, with that type of oh, yeah team. yeah yeah we, there's no doubt yeah we're making money we're a draw we're an attraction yeah. Just to see the, the, draw. the two monsters together. It was like, oh, my gosh, who are they going to feed them tonight? <laughs> I was just I, – I, one of my favorite – one of my favorite things that we did, we had a squash match. And I want to say – I think it was on Raw against High and Tai. Um, uh, Funaki and um, – gosh, dang it. I can't remember the, the other guy's name. Um. But anyway, we were the finish was going to be double last rides. Wow, uh, yeah. And anyway, so I go and I give, I think it was Funaki, I give Funaki uh, a last ride. <clears throat> but when Kane took his guy and pulled him up, he went up over his head and went out the back door. <laughs> right? <laughs> went right over the top of him. And it turned into it just turned off the cuff into an ad lib of me <laughs> chastising 
Cain for not being able to do the last ride. <laughs> So it's big brother telling little mm -hmm. brother how to do this particular yeah. move. And yeah. it, it turned out to be a funny segment. It was bad for it was bad for those guys that we're in the ring with. Yeah. Because yeah. they had to take several last rides. So now it's now I gotta show you. Yeah, I gotta show this. you again. And they're like, <laughs> And that's that's a, a mistake like that, you turn it into, you know, the you know, the Undertaker chastising his younger brother. This is how you do the last ride, like this. So now they got to take more spots, more punishment. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Like, sorry, guys. This is, Please. and everybody was just eating it up in the crowd. So it was, that was a lot of fun, but it just turned into something really spun, you know, spontaneous. Dang it. That's one. I said it. Oh, I just got a, you know, I got there. a, you know, in the jar right there. Oh, man. Oh, All man. Right. But anyway, uh, <laughs> But it turned into a really, what was going to be a kill segment turned into a funny segment. And uh, me teaching Kane how to do the last ride on Raw was. That poor tag team. Dude, that's there, a just... long, long way. Yeah. It's not just a power bomb. It's yeah. the, from the power bomb position, it's a full extension. Finishing, yeah. And then the the way, ooh. Ooh. Man, I feel I almost feel bad for even having <laughs> that in the repertoire. <laughs> it's a brain rattler, man. It Ooh. really is. Hey, this is dope, man. This is definitely dope. I'm gonna go ahead and give this give this a like, man. Y'all should as well. I'm gonna link it down below. That way y'all can check it out. But yeah, I gave it a like, man. And y'all go subscribe to Six Feet Under with Mark Calloway, man. But hey. If y'all want me to check out any other wrestling related videos, let me know down below. I definitely will. Uh, this was definitely a dope one. And it's, it's cool to see, uh, you know, Mark Calloway talk about his experiences over the years in just wrestling in general. But I appreciate all the love support y'all showing on channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you next one. Peace.